Good evening, waifus and husbandos, and welcome back to the second episode of the Waifu Cast Solo Cast, featuring me, and only me, Luna Kage. Now, I didn't really address this on the previous and first episode of Solo Cast, but why am I even doing this? Uh, if you looked at the title, you can tell that it's about fighting games, so. This one's about fighting games. Last one's about fighting games. You figure maybe, well, is it just because you're the only one that knows anything? No. No, that's not why. It's literally just because um, Game of Thrones season is going on. And it just so happens to fall on the same day we are recording. So instead of uh, instead of me watching it with them because I don't like Game of Thrones, I am filling my time while I'm stuck here doing other things <laughs> that's literally it I don't have a car I gotta get rides from them they want to watch Game of Thrones that's why we're doing this Okay. now that we got that out of the way so you're not going to hear too many solo casts during the Game of Thrones off season but you got uh, at least another five weeks of these from what I hear so let's get on with, uh, with today's topic I'm going to go through Similar to my last video, uh, a roster speculation, um, or rather for me, not necessarily speculation, more so a, uh, a wish list, I guess, for what I'd want the roster of Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle to be. But before I get into the roster, uh, I'm, I'm going to speculate, and this is speculation, it's not necessarily a wish list, of what I think the system mechanics could possibly be. Because when you compare the three games that are pre-existing, that are crossing over here, they're very different in, in a lot of different ways. Um, obviously the Ruby characters aren't going to be tied down because they've never had a fighting game before, but the other three have had Arxis made or published fighting games attached to them, and they've been completely different um, you know on, on the untrained eye you could just see an anime fighting game but people who have played each one of those games even if it's not extensively but as long as they've played it and have had knowledge like myself I can tell you those games are extremely different Under Night and Birth, Persona 4 Arena and Blaze Blue could not be more different unless they were but they'd be the same amount different probably I guess I don't know whatever fuck Okay, so here's the deal. Something that's very important for me as a stick player is the arcade layout. <clears throat> um, I don't necessarily know if this is going to get an arcade release. Um, I'm not sure how it's working. Maybe it could just be console only, but the button layout is very important to me because um, I play on stick. And the thing is, these three games that we're working with here even the two that have the most similar button layout, they still had different ways that they went about it as well as button combinations. For example, imagine if you would an eight button arcade stick. Each one of these games, all four, all three of these games use four of those buttons. Blaze Blue, depending on type A or B, but uh, it doesn't matter because they use the same four buttons, just different what those buttons do. Uh, for example, Blaze Blues Type B, there's three buttons on the top, A, B, and C, and then one button on the bottom, D, right? Light attack, medium attack, heavy attack, and then the button on the bottom is drive attack. Type A, on the top, you got B, C, and D, and then on the bottom you have A, which is... On the top you have medium attack, heavy attack, drive attack, and on the bottom you have light attack. That is more akin to what Guilty Gear was like. Okay? Now, Under Night and Birth, it used the same button layout, so the three buttons on top, one button on the bottom, but it, it didn't have an option. Basically your button layout was A, B, C on top, and then D on bottom. Light attack, medium attack, heavy attack on top, and on the bottom you had shield, which was a universal mechanic. It wasn't different per character. 
you know, you had shield, assault, all that stuff mapped to that button. Persona, completely different. You're completely flipping the script. In Persona, you had two buttons on top, two buttons on the bottom. On top, you had uh, light attack and light persona attack. And on the bottom, you had heavy attack and heavy persona attack. Now, that already means that it's you can't really have a completely same layout. Unless you were going to make it... God, I don't know how... I don't even think they would do it like that either. Uh, but what I was thinking is they can do it a couple of different ways. They could have their Persona characters just completely faithful, uh, and you need to set a particular button to, you know, for that, the way they did in Persona. Or, what I'm thinking is likely that they could do is... Uh, is kind of modify the Persona characters to where they have A, B, and C, light attack, medium attack, heavy attack, on the top, and then on the bottom, you have Persona action, basically. Um, it, w it would change a lot of what the characters were like, but Persona didn't really have a lot of command normals. You had... Uh, you know, you'd have your 5A, 5B, 5C, 5D and then your 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D, and then your JA, JB, JC, JD, but you wouldn't really have 60s, you know, like, stuff like that. So it's very possible that they could fit every single character's persona attacks into one button, um, while also giving them more stuff to work with for uh, three levels of normal attacks as opposed to uh, just two. Um, you know, because they had different attacks within their auto combo strings that they might not have auto combos in Blaze Blue Tag Battle. It's a thought, it's a possibility. The reason why I bring that up is because on top of this button layout, you also have to factor in your assist slash tag out button. Um, since this is Arxis, I think it's extremely likely that their tag button is going to be in the same place where Guilty Gear's dust button was. Now, if you look at the Guilty Gear button layout, you had three buttons on top, two on the bottom, but a space in the middle. So, imagine if you would a six-button arcade stick. On top, you would have kick, slash, and heavy slash, and on the bottom, you would have punch, an empty button that didn't do anything, and then to the right of that button, you'd have dust. So, I'm thinking that would be where the tag button goes. So as a universal, universal layout for Blaze Blue Tag Battle, you would have A, B, and C on top, D on the bottom, empty button, and then right next to that you would have a tag or assist. A t assist and then hold the tag like it is usually in, in these types of games. What I'm thinking they would do is just have a unified thing where they're basically forcing the Blaze Blue players into Type B, so that it works the same as it does in Undernight, and then they would change up the system for Persona. And how it would work is that A, B, and C, the buttons on top, would be your normals, light, medium, heavy. Your buttons on the bottom, obviously you'd have tag all the way to the right, but in the D button, the universal D button, would be that separate mechanic in each of these games. So it would be Drive for the Blaze Blue characters, uh, Shield slash Assault for the Undernight characters, and then it would be um, Persona attacks for the Persona characters. That's, that's a theory that I had. Um, it's also possible, and I think this would probably be more fun, it might be less balanced because there'd be a lot, but it'd, it'd kind of be more fun because it would open up a lot of possibilities, Instead of, like that, having a universal thing, it would be based on uh, a groove system. And I mentioned a groove system in my last video, and I've mentioned it numerous times if you hear me talk. But since there is three different series going on here, they could use different grooves where the characters act and have the button layout associated with that series. So, for example... Uh, blaze blue groove, right? Uh, each character would have 
a drive attack. They would have a barrier. They would have throw mapped to B plus C. Um, and drive attack would be a little different. Because, um, like, obviously, how could you... I'm, actually, now that I think about it, uh, that could still kind of work with my old theory as well. Because the, the D button for drive, shield, and persona, they could essentially be the same. It would just change what you have access to on a mechanical standpoint. So like a blaze blue groove, you would have that you would have access to barrier by pressing A plus B, access to grab by pressing B plus C, a rapid cancel using 50 meter pressing A plus B plus C, as well as a burst by pressing all four buttons, right? Um, meanwhile in an undernight system you would not have access to the same thing. You would it would you would probably use a grind system, which I don't really know how it would work if your opponent's not using a grind system. But then again, uh, that would be kind of an issue even if they weren't using the the groove system, because if they were just using it by each character uses the system mechanics of their individual game, then you know the undernight characters would still be using the grind system. But I guess, like, I, you know, maybe it just depends on how many, how much grind you have by the time that little stock goes up. Or maybe they'll modify the grind system to make it so that once you, want, you'll have a grind gauge instead of a grind, like, uh, scale, where once your grind gauge is full, then you can access your uh, chain shift, stuff like that. That's possible. How they can make it so that they can do a grind system without the other person having a grind system. Um... So that that's a possibility too. But for under night, um, you know, your throws would be A plus D. Um, your you would have a, a regular step dash if you pressed forward A plus B, or a back dash if you pressed uh, back A plus D or A plus B, um, as well as it would give characters who use that groove an assault, which would be the biggest reason to use that if you were playing a different. Um, a character from a different game. For example, right? I'm a Noel player. Everyone knows that. Uh, Noel's not very strong in uh, this most recent version, CF. So let's say I was playing Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle and I picked Noel Blaze Blue Groove. She would play exactly like Noel does, right? No difference whatsoever except for whatever balance changes they decide to give her in this game. But. Maybe I'm like, okay, Noel's overheads kind of suck. They're really slow. I don't use barrier a whole lot. Um, because I want my opponents to be close so that when I drive through their shit, I can get an optimal confirm, stuff like that, right? Um, so, I don't really need barrier too much. Let's switch. Let's play Noel with the Undernight Groove. So now I lose barrier. My throw is now A plus D, not B plus C, so that might fuck me up, but, you know, whatever. My B plus C would be um, a force function, which I don't know what it would be for her. Maybe uh, it would it would be, uh, it would just change the property of what her uh, crush trigger would be. Like, it would be the same animation, but it might do something different. Like, it wouldn't be necessarily an unblockable. I know a lot, of, well, I can't say a lot, but a lot of the force functions I'm familiar with um, activate kind of like counters a little bit under certain situations, but then again, Noel doesn't necessarily need a lot more counters. But you know, that's that's neither here nor there. Um, but that's how they could work the force function mechanic into into Blaze Blue, where Blaze Blue doesn't have a dedicated force function. They do have crush triggers, and vice versa. Like maybe uh, um, you know, an Undernight character like Akatsuki, if he were to use a Blaze Blue groove, his crush trigger would be the same animation as his force function. Which would be a little weird, because his force function is a parry, is a literal parry, but I guess you could say his crush trigger would just be the attack animation after the parry would normally get caught. So instead of being a parry, it would just be an attack that was a crush trigger, you know, something like that. So back to why I would use uh, Undernight Groove Noel, okay? So I've got, I've got this force function that now operates differently than a crush trigger, but I now have an assault. So... An assault is like a short hop. That opens up some possibilities. 
um, for Noel specifically. Like she can now have access to the uh, to the pretty strong assault throw game that's in Undernight, as well as um, a better way to kind of utilize jumping pressure without needing to go all the way in the air because she's got a, she's kind of got a big jump. It's not super floaty, but it's pretty floaty. Um, another difference between the two would be a Gatling system. Like, Blaze Blue and Persona, they both have Gatlings. Meanwhile, uh, I mean, no, uh, Under Knight's got Gatlings too. But you cannot jump cancel anything on block in Under Knight. Uh, as well as the fact that if you were using an Under Knight Groove, uh, characters that aren't from Under Knight could get rebeats. So they could get whiff pressure, you know, like normal whiff pressure, like, you know, B, C, 5A whiff, but you're plus because that C button had a lot of blocks done, you know? So you're, you're canceling it into a move that has better startup and recovery than your C move has recovery. There's, there's a lot of different reasons why you would want to use that groove. Um, meanwhile, shit, persona, like a persona groove... If we're just using uh, system mechanics, a persona persona had uh, all-out attacks, which were overhead. So everyone had an overhead. But the thing is, is that if you were going to do this uh, with the different button combinations or the different button layouts, I mean, you would have to change the macros a little bit because the macros in persona were assuming that you were in that diamond pattern on the button layout. So, for example, your macros were. Um, both, pressing both normal buttons gave you uh, all-out attack, which was your universal overhead. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. I, I'm not extensively familiar with Persona Four. Not only that, but I played using a different button layout because it was just so uncomfortable to me. Um, if I'm not mistaken, if you pressed both light attacks, you would get you would get like a little like a dodge roll. You know, you would you, it would look like you were dashed, but you would roll through your opponent, which was good for evading uh, projectiles. If you pressed both heavy attacks, that was your throw. Um, I do not remember what happened if you pressed both persona attacks. I want to say it was a hop. I think that's what it was. Um, okay, so there there's a lot of buttons there. A lot of button combinations. How would you do that with the A, B, C on top, D on the bottom layout? Uh, a plus B, B plus C, A plus D, so that's three. There's not really anything else you can do. I don't know. I, it's it's possible if, if uh, that last macro that I'm talking about is indeed a short hop, that they might get rid of that if they were to go with this route that I'm talking about to make that more akin to oh you know what you know what it was it wasn't a short hop I'm dumb it was uh, it was a, a your reversal uh, and I don't necessarily think it was both heavies I can't remember but I do know there was a uh, there was a universal reversal mechanic as well so yeah that's kind of important well shit all right I'm, <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent on this these are all theories ideas I'm throwing around right but there's a couple different ways, and I do kind of like the idea of a groove system because, again, I would love to be able to try these characters that I've been playing in Blaze Blue forever with different mechanics from other games. That would be awesome. Like, especially as somebody that's played Noelle for as long as I have, being able to try her out in three different uh, game engines, not engines, but you know what I, you get what I mean, uh, mechanical operating procedures uh, that would be pretty cool for me um, but again that would literally triple your roster size because the characters would act differently depending on which groove you pick so it's 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 whatever it's also possible that well if, if they go this route um, by making these characters different in any way whether it be a groove system or um, you know, every character uses a system from their game, the Ruby characters are going to be different. So there's going to be a Ruby Groove, 
I would expect if they were using the groove system. And if, they're, if they weren't, if they were just using it from their game, then the Ruby characters would operate on a different uh, mechanical, you know, whatever, to the other characters, right? So that's, that's what I'm thinking, uh, what I've been kind of mulling around in the head. So now that that's through, tell me what you think about that, which way you'd prefer it, uh, if you've got a different idea. You know, let, let me have it, I want to know. Uh, because... I want this game to be fun because I, I've fallen out of love with Blaze Blue, and uh, I would like to have a fresh new take on it to just, you know, just be able to to play it again. You know. Now, as far as my roster uh, wish list, I guess goes, the way I'm kind of looking at it, um, there's there's two ways I'm expecting, and it and it really just depends on what they're doing with the Persona characters. But I. F- fully believe, like this is speculation, it's not necessarily wish list, but I want this to happen as well as the fact that I think it's going to happen, but I think the Ruby characters are just going to be the four main girls. Uh, so Ruby, uh, Vice, Blake, and Yang, I believe their names are. I'm not super up on my Ruby lore because I was never really a big fan of it, but I'm sure casual fans Love, love all these characters, and by ca- casual fans, I'm talking about Ruby fans. Ruby fans, I'm sure, love those characters because they're the main characters, and most fighting game fans who may not be fans of Ruby would be familiar with them because if they've heard of the series, they've heard of those characters. You know, if you, if you stick a random male character from Ruby that no one else knows about except hardcore Ruby fans probably not going to grip too many people, I would assume. I could be wrong on that, you know, there might be some cool character designs in there, but, you know, I'm hoping and expecting the only Ruby characters we're getting are those four. Um, And that's notable because I believe the other games are going to get eight characters each. And I say that basically just to have, like, you know, uh a basic starting point. And I got that number because I looked at Persona 4. How I think they might go about it is just giving us the eight members of the investigation team. So no Persona 3 characters. And that that, you know, that could be disheartening to some people that cuz there was a lo- there was a lot of characters that weren't Persona 4 characters in Persona 4 Arena. Like, you know, you had Persona 3 characters and the Persona 4 Arena characters who were exclusive. And that could throw a wrench in it, too, because obviously you've got the Persona 4 investigation team, Narukami, Yosuke, Chie, Yukiko, Kanji, Risei, Naoto, and Teddy. Um, that's, That's a pretty big list already. And eliminating any of these... If you were to eliminate any of these, I would assume it would have to be Risei, because Risei is not really a fighter. They made her, like, from the ground up in Persona 4 Arena so that she could be a fighter. Um, And if she was gotten rid of, I'd assume maybe they could put a Persona 4 Arena exclusive character in there, like, for example, uh, you know, Labrys, maybe Shadow Labrys, because she's a puppet character, and my list lacks any puppet characters, so... Uh, other than that, maybe um, maybe show. Not a fan of show personally, but you've got two different shows you can work with. I, I wouldn't want the game to be riddled with Persona 4 Arena exclusive characters, though, because I mean you got plenty of Persona 4 characters to work with that you know you might as well just use those. But uh, the only expendable member of the Persona 4 roster, I believe, is Rise, because even though Teddy's just your random. You know, mascot character, he's still an important part of the team who can participate in fights in the RPG. So pretty much everyone who's familiar with Persona 4 is going to be familiar with him. But Risei is the only one that I could foresee not having an active fighting role. And Risei could be replaced with either those Persona 4 Arena exclusive characters I mentioned, or they could throw a huge surprise in there and announce a Persona 5 character. And that would be sick. Obviously, if it was anybody, it'd probably be Joker. But I would not be salty at all if they threw a Persona 5 character in there. Even if it was one I wouldn't play. Like a male character, because I wouldn't play one. <laughs> but, you know, that'd be it'd be kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I'm expecting 8 from Persona 4. From uh, Undernight Birth, um, 
the list I have is is pretty varied. Um, I went with Hyde because we know Hyde's going to be in the game. Linne because she's like you know she's a secondary character. She's literally the main female who works with Hyde, so she's probably going to be in. Seth and Carmine, I, I think they add the uh, you know the edgy tween bop look that's uh, that the kids are into nowadays. Plus, like they're both you know completely different characters, and I think they'd be cool to add. Orie, I added in there basically because if we're not going to have Mitsuru, we should have Orie. And, you know, one rapier... I, I would not want to deal with two rapier characters, because they would probably play very similar um, as far as normals go, because they have a lot of the same normals, honestly. Um, I put Merkava, because I think having a weird character like Merkava, he's, he's like... He's a... He's a non-conventional zoner, I think, and uh, I think he'd be he'd be pretty good for the game, uh, for this for this game specifically. Uh, then uh, Sion, who is I believe is called Eltnum in Undernight. Uh, her her name is Sion from Melty Blood, but it's the same character because uh, she's the she is like one of the original characters from Melty Blood. That's why they put her in Undernight in Birth. And that's why I think she'll make an appearance in this game as well. You might as well just fucking put her in every fucking game. Uh, and then lastly, I put Akatsuki. And I have really no reason to put Akatsuki in the game from a uh, marketing standpoint. I just want him in the game personally because my boy plays him. And I want what my boy wants. Because that's who I is. Shoutouts to Lumen. You my dude. Let's move on. Now my Blaze Blue Wish list is um it's ridiculous because eight is not a lot of characters. Blaze Blue's got so many characters, and it's ridiculous. Um I really just picked the eight that I expected to be in the game based on not necessarily popularity, but just who I could see in the game that wouldn't necessarily surprise anybody, I guess you could say, right? Ragna and Jen, we know are in the game already. Uh, Noel, I think, is a shoe in Like, I, I don't think they... I, I think it would be more surprising to people if she wasn't in the game. Um, n you know, most people don't like Noel from a gameplay standpoint, but, uh, I mean, obviously I want her in the game because she's been my main character for eight years, but uh, she's also a super important character in the story, and she's been there since CT, you know, the very first game, she's the female lead, I really don't see her not making it in. You know what I mean? Same same with Linne. I don't see her not making it in. Uh, Rachel, because again, she's like, she's a super Blaze Blue character. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I just feel like if Rachel was announced tomorrow, people would just be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, obviously again, really important to the story, but I'm not doing this based on story importance, just kind of you know, how, how well they're known, maybe, I, I don't even know if I could say that, but, you know, I'd want Rachel to be in the game, because uh, I, I like Rachel too. Um, five and six, Makoto and Subaki, and I put them in there, both of them for the same reason, because they're part of the uh, the NOL, like, girl squad, basically, you know, with uh, along with Noel, and I think putting them in the game would be, like, a cool thing to do. Plus, I also really like Makoto, and she might be cool, like, with an undernight group as well, you know, it, it'd be cool to see it. Seventh place, I put Tager, um, because there is obviously a strong lack of grapplers on, um, or at least dedicated grapplers on my list here, and it was basically between him or Waldstein from Undernight, and I was like, well, if it was going to be anybody, it would be Tager, because people know Tager. Tager is, is that boy, and as much as I don't like Tager personally, I still think, one, he's a cool character, and, like, he's also got, he's also the grappler that has the the best ability, I think, to survive in this crossover game, because, again, uh, this game is going to have a bunch of different competing mechanics, and I think that if you were to stand up against a zoner with a grappler, you might as well have the ability to magnetize people, you know, just saying. I don't exactly know as, as as much about the other games. Obviously, Kanji's on this list, too. 
and he's a grappler. So like that's that's two grapplers. You know, it's, it's quite a bit of grapplers. One of the Ruby characters could be a grappler as well. You know, it's possible they could have a grappler from every game, like one grappler from every game. So like maybe Tager, and then they'd have Kanji, and then maybe Waldstein would be in this game. You know, replacing one of these uh, characters that I put. But I believe Tager's going to make it in the game. Uh, and for my final Blaze Blue pick, I put uh, New or Lambda, one of the uh, one of the two sword summoning Murakumo units because I think they're also really analogous if I said that word right or even used it right if not I apologize but I think they're definitely when you when you think blaze blue you think of the Murakumos you know what I mean I think all these characters with the exception of maybe Makoto and Tsubaki because again they were only put in there uh, because Noel was in there and I thought it'd be cool to have them in there round out the rest but all these characters, when you think about them, you know, when you think about Blaze, Blaze Blue, these characters usually can come into mind. Um, if I were to make any changes whatsoever, like, uh, you know, this is obviously my wish list, but uh, some characters that I could probably put in there without feeling too bad about it. Uh, you know, Bang. Bang would be nice. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't mind having him in at all. Like, he's, he's a fun character. I feel like there's not too many, uh, you know, not serious characters in this list that I have, so Bang, I think, would be cool. Plus, like, you know, imagine uh, imagine Bang interacting with fucking uh, the Ruby characters. That'd be interesting, I think. Um, Kagura, maybe. But Kagura, honestly, probably not, uh, at least as far as likeliness. But I wouldn't really mind him being in the game. You know, there, there's so many Blaze Blue characters. Platinum might be in the game. She's, like, you know, super cutesy. Fucking... Yeah, there's a lot of different possibilities. Um, but, yeah, that's my wish list. I really don't have much else to say. I kind of had more to say about mechanics because, like, I don't really necessarily have a justification for a lot of the characters I put in the game with the exception of them all being justified in the same way. So it's a little different than when I made my roster speculation on Dragon Ball Z because... Uh, Dragon Ball Z, I felt like every character I could have explained why or why not I thought they could have made it in the game meanwhile this one, I think a lot of characters have the potential I, I think my wish list has, has more potential to be wrong for cross tag than my wish list slash speculation for Dragon Ball Fighters you know so that's kind of the, uh, the assumption I'm operating under let me know what you think. Um, you know, who do you want to see in Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle? How do you think they're going to handle the system mechanics? Do you think it's going to be universal? Do you think it's going to be um, by character? Let me know. I want to hear. Comment down below if you're on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, if you're on all the other ones, get us on YouTube and comment down below. Check us out. Um, I'm going to go away for a while. And I don't mean permanently. I mean, <laughs> I mean, this is how I normally end my videos. So I'm going to go away for a while. But while I'm gone, don't forget your waifu. <laughs>